Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. In this episode of Travis Talking, I will cover energy in uh, two different ways predominantly. Um, and they both revolve around the idea of free energy. And uh, to some, the idea of free energy may be, you know, like, what are you talking about, free energy? What are you? Um, but it's a real, real thing. It's... Um, for some people it's common knowledge that there are three energy inventions that have been suppressed by the current energy uh, systems that are in place. You know, the, the companies, corporations who own the means of uh, delivering energy and harvesting, collecting energy. Uh, these are some very, very powerful uh, com corporations. You've got the oil industry all mixed up in there uh, and all of this and there. These uh, entities, these groups are uh, making a lot of money from keeping this current way of uh, energy going, you know, and you have, all right, you've got solar energy, uh, but it's highly, highly inefficient and is only scratching the surface of what we can do in terms of renewable energy and uh, free energy. I was uh, just watched a video of, of, of a man, it was a few years ago now, and he uh, had a very simple idea that could turn every window into an energy generator um, with very clever technology to be able to harness and store the uh, energies. But of course, um, such technology like that would uh, basically it would almost completely cripple the current matrix. So f it can be seen why there would be huge amounts of resistance to that, to uh, stop that from happening. But it just, you know, talking to this with people when you sort of, well, it really doesn't have to be like this, guys. This current way of living is so... It, for, for that, it's fake. It's not even a real system. It's completely illusory. We're just born into it and and uh, indoctrinated from from, um, from our home and then from school and then through other people and through the media and so on. And nobody... Well, uh, a lot of us do, actually. A lot of us question it, but there are a lot, perhaps even more people who don't actually question the system we are in. And that is so crucial to to actually question things outright is, uh, you know, every child you meet will, every young child is asking a myriad of different questions about the reality, wanting to know what this is and what that is and why that does this. And and so um, I believe, uh, unless it is stamped out of people, that it's natural to keep asking questions about everything as you get older. It's uh, how we no begin to know things and uh, and all of that. So if you do not question this system and then you suddenly, um, someone comes along and says, hey, this system isn't real and you're believed in it, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be quite a tough one. So, yeah, getting back to the idea of um, free energy, there is a huge game changer, but it would take a while, I think, for humanity to be ready for such things. But it's just interesting to know about and then tell people about um, so they can come to the conclusions that oh maybe actually this this reality isn't quite real. This governments they don't serve me, they are corrupt and and so on. They start questioning maybe the monetary system or their life. You know, to get people questioning again is good. It's very interesting. You propose situations where they just um, they can't get an answer, but then you have to be careful not to create more conflict and tension between yourselves. So it's a very delicate procedure. But it's also um, it's very important to be in, in undertaking this work. It's just a bit of a skill to do it calmly and and um, and come out of a positive result at the end, even if it might take a while. There's a bit of patience involved there. So um, and you know many people know about Nikola Tesla and his ideas of harnessing energy from and using the Earth as a conductor. And there are many many different uh, possibilities out there, guys. It doesn't. Uh, the uh, possibilities are limited to our imagination really this um, beautifully abundant world has provided us all the tools we need to be able to create a life of abundance it's actually the normal state of life is in abundance but we have been so uh, fractured and disconnected from nature and our own bodies which we've forgotten what it's actually like to be living in abundance and not have to worry about just getting money to survive it's how much time of humans is just spent on just getting money to survive, you know, it's, um, uh, it really, really doesn't have to be like this, and 
hopefully enough people uh, begin waking up to this fact. Uh, it's up to the people who are already have awoken to this fact to, to do the work, be confident in the knowledge and um, do everything they can to assist their fellow humans who, who are who are in slavery. I mean, well, n nearly everyone I know, I don't know anyone actually, who isn't in slavery to this current system, the way it has monopolized the, the control of resources and, and food and all of this stuff. And just to see what we're up against is a good start. Um, but it's also, it's very important to not get caught in this sort of fear cycle, you know, and be scared of all these things because at the end of the day, uh, it, it, evil exists. So people, we have a choice to do good. And for us, to for them once we have made the choice for the good to become strong in destroying it in the same way you know like body builders lift weights to train their muscles for the weights act of resistance or the evil acts as a form of resistance for the people to become stronger in themselves and their knowledge and all of this stuff so remember the it's good to have a bit of a um, an understanding like this when you're dealing with this stuff and to remain centered in your heart and you know you can have love in your heart, but then have still have actions to, to act to do um, to do away with the evil and to not do it from hating or fear or anything like this, from a very calm, centered, grounded uh, state of being, and that is truly where the the real change will happen. If if you haven't got the groundedness in yourself and you're trying to change everything else externally and you haven't done at least a little bit of work on yourself it's um, you're going to end up in self-destruction trying to save everyone else when you're not saving yourself and in the end that is actually doing a disservice to you and the people you're trying to help uh, by impeding the long-term benefits that would come if you were to do the work on yourself first and then once you have reached a good, good enough state to then help others um, there's I believe that is just how it is um, and that brings me on to my my next uh, point, which again is free energy. But this time, it is energy that we can gather ourselves as human beings. That's a very interesting uh, idea, isn't it? And you might go, well, how, okay, so how am I supposed to gather energy for myself? And you know, without the, the without sleeping and eating, um, you know, the stuff that we use to to gather energy in those ways. Um, if you've never heard of the practice of Qigong before, it's uh, something that I practice and I've been practicing for four years now and I plan to do a, a teacher training course uh, for, for a month in China at the beginning of next year and to get even deeper into this practice and be able to uh, to teach people as a, perhaps as a career, as a job. I w I'd really, really enjoy to be a Qigong teacher. So... Um, the, in its true form, the specific branch I practice is for healing, and um, I have the teachers of my teachers who cured themselves of a very serious disease through Qigong, and then they become inspired to teach others and so on. And um, the, uh, the I've met one of the teachers from China, and they, there was a center before the whole Falun Gong incident happened, and you know Qigong practitioners were severely, severely impacted. There was a center which um, was able to cure and heal people from a huge variety of diseases in a very short amount of time. Time. This was within um, one to three months. People were were able to hear again who couldn't hear. And um, oh, this is a huge list. If you go to DowHearts.com, I'll put a link in the description. There's a a huge list of diseases that were cured by this center. And um, so I it was well, so the branch is Zinen Qigong. I imagine there are many different kinds of Qigong. I don't know uh much about any other branches apart from the one that I have practiced. Uh as in, you know, like yoga, there's there's many different types of yoga, many different uh purposes. So Zinen Qigong and I mainly just use it for to get more energy for for my throughout my day. Um and I notice it, uh, if I do 45 minute Qigong um, session, I have greater clarity of mind. I am much, much calmer in myself. And, and in general, my emotions are much more uh, flowing harmoniously. And my, my interactions with people are so much better. And what it is, is uh, I, I attribute it to, um, it's like um, having an energy bath. Uh, and revitalizing all of your cells, 
through the etheric energy that you gather through this Qigong practice. And it's um, huge, I found it to be hugely, hugely beneficial. And I believe uh, it's important for anyone who is trying to, to awaken others to the situation that's going on, that they um, have enough energy in themselves to make it through the day and have good health. Because if you don't have good health, well, you don't have very much, and there's only so much you can do to help others. So I truly believe that Qigong is a very, very powerful tool for that. Um, and if we look at how it could cure disease, where we look at the fact that we are uh, electromagnetic beings, we are electrical beings, um, for anyone who isn't convinced of this fact, we just think about the uh, fact that um, the you know when you touch something or when you're listening to my words, it's interpreted through our senses, and it's electrical signals going to our brain. We are electrical beings. Everything we experience is electrical. And so then there are uh, people, systems, and practices that have um, gone beyond this and developed this, refined this, and um, saying that we have energy flowing throughout our body, sort of um, underlining the physical aspect of our body. We have an, an etheric and energetic body. And that is um, as much a part of us as the physical body. It's just that we can't see it. <laughs> but you can, you know, it's there. And um, it sort of puts a new light on the uh, the Western medicine's idea of many of these supposedly incurable diseases. When in reality, there is, there's, uh, I believe, if there have ever is a disease, there's always a cure. It's, I just, and we just haven't quite figured it out yet. But say... Uh, an interesting example, uh, just a generic, is say someone has uh, a huge amount of suppressed anger. They um, something happened to them in the past, and they just can't quite let it go. And then they uh, like some something quite severe, you know. And they're so they were so angry about it, but they didn't express it, and they didn't um, uh, transform it in any way. They just suppressed it, and maybe they did this uh, two or three times. And it starts to build up, you know, and it sort of gets put into what is called the shadow. And the Carl Jung termed the, the phrase the shadow, where all of our unconscious um, dark stuff is sort of hidden and it is not acknowledged unless we begin to acknowledge it, of course. And um, so then that can, of course, re then uh, relate into your interactions with all the people around you. You know, someone says something and it may, on this level, on the unconscious, subconscious level, trigger you into feeling just a little bit of what that was that really annoyed you but you don't know what it was you can't remember consciously and then you get really angry and uh, you take it out on the person and they're like whoa what did that even where did that even come from and then so that's how the uh, unconscious shadow can have an impact in our life but okay so then you have that building up and building up and eventually that could well cause a blockage in the energy body and you wouldn't even you wouldn't be able to see it but then maybe you start to have a physical symptom of the energetic blockage in your body and then you have a disease. You see how that would work? It's um, a very generic example. And I've, uh, during my time, uh, I've heard uh, different stories from people who have been able to uh, cure themselves of alternative uh, remedies and medicine and um, energetic healing. And there's just one case which I is by far captured my attention the most and I um, so there's a woman in the area that I'm working I do her work for her I do her gardens and her profession is a chakra balancer not quite Reiki she, she doesn't call it Reiki it's her own form of chakra balancing that she has developed through her own experience and um, so she's been doing this for, uh, for over 25 years now but the, the case that we've spoken about quite a bit um, is one of this four and a half year old girl so did she um, she had done over 20 chemotherapy treatments and had severe stomach cancer and from the doctors was given about less than about four months to live I believe it was and her parents uh, were very, you know, sort of left-brained um, people. They were university lecturers. They didn't really believe in all this energy stuff, but in their desperation, they were desperate to try anything. And they must have heard about what Jack, some of the stories that this um, woman has uh, done before. And I, I won't mention her name for uh, privacy reasons, but I would refer to her as the healer when I need to. 
um, so so the healer, she um, did her session, and she only did about I think it's thirty minutes on uh, this girl, and you know it's quite hard to do this with a four and a half year old girl. You know they're quite restless, and they have to really you know to just sort of lay down, and chill out. But um, so they did the session. This was about twelve o'clock in the day, and um, the healer says to the parents, "Well, okay." So you may expect a an emotional release after this treatment, and uh, it's worth mentioning that during the whole chemotherapy treatments, this little girl had never cried, She'd never cried for at all any of this. And I mean, I mean, I think I would even cry if I went through chemotherapy. Like it was such a terrible and horrible thing on the body. Um, so anyway, uh, the the parents sort of look at the healer and they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. We've seen our daughter go through way more than that than whatever you just did. You know, obviously they were a bit, they were extremely skeptical. So anyway, they leave, and then the healer gets a call at about half past nine at night, and the parents they said themselves if they hadn't seen it themselves, they wouldn't actually believe what had just happened. And their daughter had been crying the whole day, like the whole day since the session. Um, and what it was, was she was having this emotional release. So, so perhaps her her problem was to do with some sort of emotion that had been somehow. I I can't fathom how a, a girl a young girl like this has um, a problem like this at a young age. Um, perhaps even it was a physical cause or a physical disease that was then cured through energy healing. I I don't know about that one. It's very interesting to think about though because. What happens after is the healer, she works on the girl uh, once every two weeks and does this for about six months. And of course, she is still alive by this point. She, the, the young girl goes back to the doctors and they, of course, are amazed that she's still alive. And they're looking at her and she's like, wow, she looks pretty healthy. And they, they scan her and the cancer is completely gone. It's absolutely gone. So... What does that tell you? Um, that's pretty amazing, if you ask me. And um, we skip forward to present day, and uh, I've seen a picture of this girl. She was like 20, 21 years old in this picture. This beautiful girl, and she's living a good life. And it was because the healer, she did her energy healing and saved her life. That's so amazing. And and who knows what the actual cause was, if it was energetic or not. But the treatment was with energy, and now that is truly amazing. Truly, truly amazing, and um, it's also worth noting. I I regard the healer that I've, I'm talking about in the story is in the top one percent of healers throughout the world. From my experience, um, I've had a, a five other um, supposedly they call themselves healers that do work on me, and they've either made my situation worse, uh, or they were a scam, or they just didn't really know what they were doing. You know, it's sort of like a side hobby for them something that they were kind of interested in but it wasn't like a serious profession like the original healer from the story that I was talking about she took this as her life mission and you could really f feel the difference it was um, I actually had a session with the uh, the healer from the story and it was incredible it was really really amazing what I experienced um, so there's um, just a bit of word of advice to practice caution when going to people who call themselves healers because there are people out there who are just in it for the money, who are in it for just for a bit of interest, a bit of a hobby and and so on. And that, that is to just to make the point to not discredit the real people who, well, I say real people, the people who are really actually healing people um, and to to bring some credit to the whole idea and um practice of healing people with energy um, and this is just uh, another example I just had a, a couple of days ago um, another woman I worked for a separate woman she was um, she, she about 10 years ago she was really starting to lose her sight she even couldn't she didn't pass a driving test she's quite an old woman and um, you know she had to reset a driving test she didn't pass it luckily a partner could still drive her around but then she uh, tried many different things, supposedly went to these top eye specialists and everything, but had no luck with all of that. But then she was told about this uh, woman who does acupuncture. And she went to this woman and she did acupuncture and did some massaging. And to her amazement, her sight started to come back. And now that's pretty amazing, isn't it? And then she, she actually regained um, 
from being almost completely blind to only being able to see like faint colours and shades to actually being able to completely see again to then reset her test and being able to drive and that's pretty amazing if you ask me. So these are just a couple of examples of what is possible through uh, energetic healing and stepping outside the Western medicine model. And uh, of course, Western medicine uh, has its place in, in many ways. I'm sure uh, antibiotics have saved many lives if they're used as and when as necessary. Um, and of course, if you break your arm, um, it's, it's probably going to be no good doing sitting doing uh, qigong on your arm. You want to go to the hospital and get that sorted. Uh, so Western medicine has its place, but it also has it, its limitations. And if we are to incorporate the human race and all of its, its wealth of knowledge and practices in a holistic sense, and take you know from from different parts and see, I'm sure we could have a collection of uh, practices and uh, modalities and remedies that could heal every disease on this that's ever affecting humans right now. Um, but of course, again, that would be. Uh, Again, this is looking into the future as it would take sequential steps to be able to have that holistic approach to the current, to where we are. I just believe, um, I, I give this information to possibly help empower people to, to look beyond the Western medicine model, uh, if they, especially if they are suffering from a debilitating disease in any way, shape or form. And then uh, perhaps once they, they be, be, they've been cured, um, then they can then go on to help other people improve their lives. You know, the, if you are to be a truth seeker and you are to help others, you really need to be healthy as possible. And of course, health is holistic. Um, if you have these problems and diseases, you want to look at why and what could have caused it. And you know, sometimes physical problems need a physical solution. That's for sure. So it's good to cover all bases. You know, and 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 uh, anyway, the 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 basis for health and good health uh, physically and mentally and emotionally spiritually could be a whole talk on itself and uh, perhaps I'll do a talk on that in the future especially nutrition and stuff like that I find that very interesting but we'll keep it just to the energy for this one and um, the potential benefits that it could have uh, just another example as well um, I met this French woman during my time in New Zealand and she was an amazing woman but she used to have very severe period pains and then she did she got one session of acupuncture and the pain had almost completely gone and you know so these are just examples that I've met uh, that I've uh, encountered on my travels um, and I'm sure there are many many more so with that I think we'll call that the end of this this episode thank you for listening